Thaksin, I'm from Lakhapara Online, and today I'm going to be discussing with you some things that you should do on the day of your IELTS reading exam. So before I start, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel Lakhapara Online, and also share this video with your friends. Okay, so a quick review of the um, reading exam. You have one hour, there are 40 questions, and there are three sections. Now, uh, this is the same uh, format for both general training and academic reading, but there are some differences here and there. So if you want a detailed uh, breakdown of how they're different or how they're similar, you can watch a video that's going to be uploaded very soon where I highlight the differences and similarities between academic reading and general training. And um, you have one hour, and this whole one hour is, uh, you have to sit it all at once. You can't sit for 30 minutes and then uh, take a break for 20 minutes and then come back and sit for the next 30 minutes. That's not how it works. It's only 60 minutes and you have to sit for it at once. Uh, 40 questions. There are a lot of types uh, of questions in the reading module, like multiple choice questions, flow charts, um, choosing headings or um, endings and so on. So if you're interested, there is a series where I discuss all the types of um, questions that you can expect from the reading module. Uh, in, in, uh, in that series, I give you examples, I share some tips that will help you solve these kind of questions. So uh, watch those, watch that series because it's going to help you to get a deeper understanding of the types of questions to expect in the IELTS reading module. And there are three sections. Okay, so now that we know again what the reading module is about, let's get uh, started on what to do on the day of your exam. First and foremost, wear comfortable clothes. So for the reading exam, you're not going to be marked on what you're wearing, what you did with your hair, if you're wearing makeup or not, uh, how you look. So the whole mark is based on what you write on your answer sheet. So there's no reason for you to wear some uncomfortable clothes just because you think you look pretty or um, something like that. So make sure you wear something that you're comfortable with because you're going to be sitting for one hour, which is quite long. And uh, if you're uncomfortable, then it's going to affect the way you perform in your exam. And another thing that I would also like to mention is that uh, in most of the IELTS exam centers, they blast the air conditioner on and it's super cold. So if you think you might get cold, then you can carry a light jacket with you so that uh, if you think it's too cold, you can just wear it and then you'll feel much better. Next, uh, you should eat well. So before the exam, you can eat something light or heavy. Uh, it's your wish, but make sure that uh, you don't feel hungry or weak during the exam because if you feel weak during the exam, it's definitely going to um, affect how you um, perform on your exam. So eat something light or heavy before the exam. Uh, rest well. So this is not something you have to do on the day of your exam. So this is something you do the night before. So the night before your exam, try to get at least eight hours of sleep. I know people normally say seven to eight hours is okay, but I think eight hours is uh, eight hours of sleep is more important because you'll be well rested, you'll have a clear mind, and then when you sit for your exam, you won't feel drowsy or you won't feel sleepy. You won't feel like your brain is gonna shut down and you're gonna fall asleep on your desk, and uh, that's gonna help you. Um, perform well, that's going to help you write uh, the answers properly, and you'll be able to process the questions and the, um, and the reading materials more easily if you, uh, if you have a well, uh, if you have a well rested brain, okay? Now, make sure you stay hydrated. So it's, uh, drink a lot of fluids before the exam, drink water, drink uh, energy drinks if you're into that, drink coffee if required. And uh, so one, of this t uh, one test shows that if your body is even 1% dehydrated, then your brain's functions are reduced by at least 5%. And at least 5% means that for some people, their brain functions might reduce to, let's say, 10% or 20% if their uh, body is dehydrated, even 1%. So that's very risky because if your brain functions are reduced, that is going to affect your um, skills, uh, uh, how you're answering the questions, okay? 
The next uh, point I want to discuss is arrive early. This is also something very important. So before you actually uh, sit for your exam on the day, make sure uh, that you check where the venue is, how far away it is from your house or wherever you're staying, how long it's going to take you to go from your uh, from the place you're staying to your exam venue, whether or not um, you should wake up super early or so on. And so why is it uh, important for you to arrive early? So make sure that you know that you're not the only candidates to this exam, okay? There are a lot of other candidates. And there is going to be a queue of candidates because they're going to check you in the center. So you can't just go there and get inside. No, they're going to check your identity, make sure that you're actually supposed to be in this exam center at that, at that time, and then let you enter. So make sure you have at least 20 to 30 minutes at hand when you reach there. Don't wait last minute to go inside because it might be too late. And if you're even one minute late to your exam center, they will not let you get, uh, let you go inside and you will not be allowed to sit for your exam. Okay, so it's always safer to arrive early uh, to your exam day. Next, toilet break. Okay, so um, during the exam, for reading exam, it's 60 minutes. You are allowed to take toilet breaks. And uh, one thing to note is that you, um, so there are going to be invigilators in your exam center. Okay, so let's say you want to go to the washroom. You can't just uh, stand up and go to the washroom. You need to ask for the invigilator's permission. To ask for the invigilator's permission, you simply raise your hand and wait for them to come to your aid, and then you tell them you want to go to the washroom, and then they tell you okay, or whatever. But if, uh, don't go on and, you know, scream out, call the invigilator, I need to go to the washroom. You can't do that because you're basically going to be disturbing all the other candidates. So that's why I make sure you know that you're supposed to raise your hand. And when you raise your hand, don't call them, okay? Don't use your voice, just raise your hand. And then uh, you can go to the washroom later. So when you go to the washroom, you might take three to five minutes. Um, so this three to five minutes is actually, they're, they're very precious because this is a timed exam and a lot of people struggle to finish it on time. And uh, if you are using three to five minutes uh, on a toilet break, it might hinder how you perform in your exam. You might not even be able to finish. So um, make sure, I mean, try to go to the toilet before the exam so that you um, don't need to waste time during your exam. But again, if, if it's uh, an emergency, then obviously take a toilet break and just try to make up for it by writing faster and finish the exam on time. Okay. Um, next is disability. So if you have uh, one or more disability that might affect how uh, affect the performance of your exam, then you can call the exam center two to three days before your actual exam and tell them that you have this this problem. And then uh, they will come up with a solution. They might come up with more than one solution, give you an option, or just give you one solution, and then you have to do whatever they say. So um, if, if you have a disability, then don't uh, feel bad or whatever. Don't wait last minute to tell them that, about this. Uh, make sure you let them know two to three days before so that they can make the necessary preparations for you to sit for the exam and help you in any way possible. Uh, the next one is don't forget to take your identity uh, identification documentation. So this is also very important. You, uh, they will always check you, uh, check your identity, to make sure that you are uh, uh, you are supposed to be there. You are who you say you are. And um, one very important thing you should remember is that when you register for your IELTS exam online or uh, offline, doesn't matter. You are actually supposed to use one of your identi uh, identification documentation. It can be your passport, it can be your national ID, or any other legal uh, document that can be used to identify yourself, right? So uh, whatever you use during registration, make sure you carry that document when you uh, actually go there to sit for your exam. Okay, so let's say you use your passport to register for your exam. Use the same uh, passport. Don't take your NID to the exam center and be like, um, I'm here for my exam. It's not going to work out and you're not going to be allowed to sit for the exam. So make sure you, if you use your passport to register, take your passport to the exam center to identify yourself. 
Next, uh, focus on your exam. Again, this is also very important. So um, you're going to be sitting for your exam on the day. Make sure you have a clear head. You uh, know that you're sitting for your exam and you have to uh, perform well. You have to get a good grade. You have to pass the exam. And a lot of uh, a lot is riding on you passing the exam. You have to make the parents proud and so on. So make sure that your exam is the focus uh, on on that on the day of your exam. Okay. Don't think about what you ate last night or what movie you want to watch next. Just focus on your exam because you have a lot of time after the exam when you can think about whatever uh, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, so you should be. Uh, very, uh, you should pay attention when the invigilator is giving you instruction. So the invigilators are there to invigilate the exam center. They'll check whether or not someone's cheating, whether or not someone needs help, and so on. So uh, make sure you listen to what they're saying. At, uh, normally, they give instructions at the very beginning of the exam. And um, so go ahead and uh, try to understand what they're saying and just try to abide by all those three rules. Okay. Now phones a lot, uh, that's pretty obvious. This is uh, an exam you're sitting for, so it's not an open book exam, so you're not allowed to take your phone with you. And um, so remember that a lot of people do take their phones and they'd be like, but I'll turn it off. But that's not how it works, okay. So don't take your phone. Next, uh, no watches are allowed. So um, you can't. Uh, so some people think that uh, maybe smart watches are not allowed, but that's not true. You're not even allowed to take the normal analog watches because uh, it's just a rule that the IELTS people have uh, issued, so you're not allowed to take any watches. When you enter the exam hall, you will be able to find one or more clock. So if it's a big hall, there might be more than one clock. If it's a small one, then you see one clock on the wall. So make sure you locate this clock because this uh, will help you to time yourself. When you're writing the exam, then uh, check on the clock uh, over and over to make sure that you are on track, you're not spending too much time on one passage and so on. Okay, uh, so make sure you're confident, okay? Be uh, it, so it has, how do you know if you're confident or, not, or how to feel confident? So if you know what to expect from a reading exam, then you will automatically feel confident. If you know what to expect and how to solve them, then you feel confident. So again, I want to say that there's a series of um, videos where I um, explain all the types of questions in the IELTS. There are five parts to it, so it's very thorough. I also t uh, tell you, um, give you some tips, and also to tell you what skills you require for each type of the question. And uh, I also share with you example questions and also solve them for you. So go ahead and look, uh, look at those videos and I'm sure after you watch the whole series you'll feel much more confident about answering the questions. And uh, also solve sample papers, time yourself and check whether or not you're able to finish. And this, uh, if you keep doing this, keep practicing, then you'll feel much more confident since you know what to expect and how to do it. So um, that's how you'll be confident. So keep that, on mind, keep that in your mind. And then read the IELTS terms and conditions. So if you um, have registered online, so you'll be able to see that there's a page where they uh, actually give you, um, they show you the terms and conditions. So you can just read them or scheme through them just to get an idea of what they're expecting from you whether or not there are some things that you, if you're confused about something, maybe you'll find uh, the answer if you read the terms and conditions. If you, uh, if you haven't done your registration online and you have a physical form, you should be able to find the terms and conditions of the last page of the form. So uh, try to just, if you're, if you're too lazy, you don't want to read the whole thing, just scheme through the terms and conditions and uh, try to get the basic idea of um, what they're trying to say. Next one is don't feel stressed. So uh, again, you might think that a lot is writing on your exam, and um, you might feel stressed that you have to perform well. But um, the thing about stress is if you're stressed, then you won't perform well. So uh, you are thinking that you want to perform well, and that's why you're stressed. But then if you are stressed, you won't perform well. 
So make sure you understand this and don't feel stressed. Just be confident and um, try to answer the questions correctly and um, finish it on time and just, you know, enjoy the whole process. And if you do that, then um, you feel less, uh, less stressed and you perform well in the exam. And so that's it for this video. Make sure you like this video if you uh, thought it was fun to watch. And I hope that these tips um, will actually help you on the day of your actual exam. And uh, even though these uh, tips, these tips were actually kind of general, so I think this uh, these will also help you for your other exams. So yeah, best of luck for whatever exam you're sitting. Thanks for watching.